if your spirit is regenerated, you can interface with the realm of God legitimately. Because you have a body that was forged out of the earth, you can operate in the natural realm legitimately. God doesn't have a body. So if God is going to find expression in this realm, God will have to possess your spirit. It is when God possesses your spirit, and that's what salvation is. Oh, you are not with me. You are still. So God possesses your spirit. And it is through that layer of your spirit that man, being a very significant kingdom creature, can now allow God expression through his vessel. And that is the reason for which man was created in the image of God. Created in the image of God to qualify to possess God's delegated authority. Created in the likeness of God so that he will qualify to be able to represent God. So if we talk about the dominion of God in the earth, we cannot overemphasize the significance of the place of man. So man was actually created to be a participant in God's administrative ruling system. Apart from God, man has no meaning. That you, were, you, are, you are coming from Unshongo, local government, makes no meaning at all in the agenda of God. You can get a party card on a political platform by your legitimacy to the local government, but it will not be anything that will move the agenda of God in the earth. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. So the reason why we were designed to operate in God's image is so that we can carry what is called delegated authority. The true authority in the universe is God. Every other authority you see upon the face of the earth, it was God that permitted that authority to exist, including our governor. The Bible says that the powers that be, they belong to God. It doesn't belong to himself. It is God that made it possible for there to be a platform called the seat of the governor. And the reason why he allowed it is so that that can be another platform through which he can manifest his will if the person that sits on that platform recognizes him to be the ultimate king. Are you following? As far as man is concerned, man is a platform that is supposed to be um, a theater that gives God the opportunity for expression in the three-dimensional realm. Exactly. Let me take you to another. Please don't forget the scope of our authority. It is atmospheric. It is aquatic. It is terrestrial. Somebody say atmospheric, aquatic, terrestrial. Most of man's challenges will come from these three sources. It will come from the aquatic layer. It will come from the terrestrial layer. It will come from the atmospheric layer. But this is a context in which man's dominion is supposed to be exercised. I trust that God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Second point I need to make about man. Did you get the first point? Because the lesson is so long, in my study today, I just discovered how vast the gospel of the kingdom is, and we might hold this teaching to the end of the year. I found out how vast it is. So because of that, I want to begin to take it little by little. Because if you have ever studied your Bible from back to back, you will understand that the Bible is not a book of prosperity. How many of you realize that? Not. So the ultimate revelation that God wants to give to us as a people is not prosperity. The Bible is not a book of success. There were people that succeeded in the Bible, but it's not a book of success. 
The Bible is not a book of prayer. So the content is not prayer points. As wonderful as prayer is, this book is not a book of prayer. Are you with me? The Bible is a book of the kingdom of how God rules. That's what it is about. And the ultimate revelation will never come until the church adopts the gospel of the kingdom. And Jesus said that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness to all people and then the end shall come. It means that it is the gospel of the kingdom that will close the age. So just in case you are aware that we are in the end time, there is a message for the end time. And the message for the end time is the gospel of the kingdom. So if you happen to be in ministry at this point in time, you should realize that irrespective of what you believe the emphasis of your call is, because of the season in which you find yourself, you should be preaching the gospel of the kingdom now. And the thing about preaching is this. It is possible that what you are preaching is giving a wrong signal. But the Bible says that if the trumpet gives an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself for the battle? Are you with me? So the reason why I can't tell you that next week your car will come is because we're in the wrong season for that kind of emphasis. Any preacher that is wasting the anointing to achieve that purpose now is out of sync with what God is ad administering. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Second scripture. It's a long journey. We'll be doing it like that to the end of the year. The aspects of the kingdom so that your doubts will be cleared. Second scripture is in the book of uh, Psalms 82. Let us go there before we begin with my script just to give you a um, little insight. Psalms 82. I want to pick something from this scripture that will support our knowledge of the reason for which God created this creature called man. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judged among the gods, God standeth in the congregation of the mighty, he judged among the gods. There are so many strange things in that verse of scripture. But I will spare you the details. I've, I've used this scripture before and you know a few of the details. Hallelujah. One of the details in this scripture is that God is standing. That is not a necessity. God doesn't need to be standing. The reason is because in God's kingdom, God rules by utterances. He rules by decrees. So he doesn't need to physically stand to achieve anything. But in this scripture, the Bible says God is standing. And it will surprise you to know that within the limits of my understanding of the scripture, God stood twice in the entire Bible this scripture and in another scripture. So it is not popular for God to be standing. But so it is needful for us to know why the monarch stood. First of all, he was encompassed about with what the Bible calls the congregation of the mighty. We'll find out what that congregation is and he judged it among the gods. It means that one of the reasons why God was standing could be because of the rank of the congregation that gathered before him, or it could be because of the activity that he wanted to carry out, which was judgment. Next verse. These mighty people, these people that God called the gods, he summoned them because of judgment. And before the judgment will take place, God now takes time to show them what they did wrong. This is a lesson before judgment. That's how judgment day will be. God will sit you down, entertain you, give you fanta. And then tell you 
what you it will a lecture will be conducted then after that lecture before god will pronounce judgment so he's lecturing them now he said how long will he judge unjustly it means that these people that god called mighty he gave them some authority to represent him how how long will you accept the persons of the wicked it means the reason for which he gave them the authority to to um represent him these guys when they showed up in their field of administration they did the opposite of what god sent them to do they used the authority the authority that they were supposed to use to bind the wicked so that the oppressed can enjoy liberty. They connive with the wicked and use that authority to suppress the people God sent them to liberate. So because of that circumstance, God had to summon them. And the day he summoned them, what happened? He was standing. Next item on the lecture. He said, defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. This was what they were supposed to do. Just in case God gives you authority, gives you anointing. Gives you grace. There are some people that are unprotected, that are uncovered, that God is sending you to become their covering. There are some people that are afflicted unjustly, and He's sending you as a law enforcement agent to liberate them from their bounds. So He began to educate these guys that He came to judge so that they understand where their error was. Next verse. He said, deliver the poor and the needy. Read them out of the hand of the wicked. This was the assignment. That's the reason why God will ever give any man authority whatsoever. It is because of a certain people that are underprivileged, a certain people that he calls poor, a certain people that he calls needy people. If anybody in this auditorium becomes a governor tomorrow, let me give you a quick lecture on what your assignment is before you enter into the maze of of, of manipulations and forget the reason for which you were given the scepter. Hallelujah. I was privileged to speak to the leadership of a certain state. My first orientation, my first orientation, if I have that opportunity to bring counsel to people that are in leadership, is that I'm doing that service as an act of, of God. So I don't need your, maybe you need to transport. If you transport people that do that kind of job, I don't need the transportation. I came with. Because if you take a powerful man through this school, he won't transport you. So you, you arm yourself with... Uh, the transport money so that there will be no challenge in the matter. The reason for which you are given a scepter is clearly spread out. There are, there are people that are less privileged that are within your jurisdiction. The scepter of authority is handed out to you as an instrument of liberation. All right, you got that aspect. Go on. I don't want to go into this matter. This matter is a deep matter. Because this matter, in this matter, God is giving, is teaching Adam, is using Adam and Eve as an example to teach those gods. So I don't want to go here. But I want to show you something quickly. Because of the error of Adam and Eve, the judgment that befell that day was that the foundations of the earth were out of course. You are not with me. Adam and Eve were the first set of people that God gave divine authority to represent him in the earth. Because of their error, and their error was as a result of ignorance and lack of that, there was a darkness that they, was, they were sentenced to. If that was enough, if the direct implication of their error was just the darkness that they were now sentenced to, it would have been good. But part of their, what their error did was that it made all the foundations of the earth to go out of course. 
That is what happens when a man that is given delegated authority begins to fail. When that man fails, his failure doesn't only end with God judging him. There is also a, a systemic failure in the administration of God that will operate in the earth. Okay, you are not with me. Let me clear your doubt. Those of you sitting here, if you fail in your assignment, you will have strengthened Satan to persecute, to oppress your constituency. That's what I mean. Your constituency will never be free if the authority that God had marked for that constituency fails in service delivery. That constituency, it would have been better off if God didn't send anybody. They know not, the Bible says, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. And all the foundations of the earth are out of course. This is Adam and Eve. My emphasis is not to analyze this. The foundations of the earth. If we go into Hebrew to find the meaning of the word foundations, in that scripture, it will open us up to a very large scope of implication. Because if we go to Hebrew, you will find out that the word foundations there, the closest English relative to it in modern day English is manual. The manual was withdrawn. It's just like when God finished creating, every item he created, he, he also designed a manual of how they should function. And then because of what Adam and Eve did, he withdrew the manual. That means the possibility of those creatures operating according to design no longer existed. That's why that evangelist became a conductor. Eh? Because the manual was withdrawn. So the possibility of operating maximally in keeping with God's original intention was no longer in view. I always tell us, that mosquito was designed to be drawing juice from flowers, hibiscus flowers, and all kinds of flowers. When mosquito lost his manual, he began to, to take blood. It takes blood. It takes blood now. <laughs> it takes blood now. Because he, 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 the manual is no longer. Available. And the reason why the manual was withdrawn is because there was a man that God gave authority that failed. And that's why he called them the gods. Because only gods have authority, small g. And when a god makes a mistake, it affects his constituency. Darkness comes upon his constituency. The devil is empowered to do more havoc in his constituency. The next statement is the judgment, the judgment series. God has started uttering judgment. Through the judgment God utters, we will know what man was designed to be originally. He said, I have said, he's talking to those gods. Ye are gods. Stop there. Go to Luke. Are you still with me? Let me get the scripture quickly. Sorry, I'm preaching from my spirit, not from a script. So... Let me get the scripture. John chapter 10 verse 35 is the scripture I'm looking for. Now, please hold on to Psalms 82 verse 6. Because my point, I'm driving, the point I'm driving at, I'm close to it. 
This is Jesus speaking. Jesus said, if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scriptures cannot be broken. He called them gods unto whom the word of the Lord came. Called them gods. See, speaking about Adam and Eve. The decree of God came to them. Because the decree of God came to them to operate as representatives to him, he called them God. So I have said, ye are God. The reason why ye are God is because the instructions, the decrees of the, of the God of heaven, it, it has come to you. And anyone that has received the decrees of the gods of, of, of heaven, delegating authority to him, functions in the capacity of an authority upon the face of the earth. But it's small g. Now, the Bible says concerning Moses that God made Moses a God, small g, unto Pharaoh. The word of the Lord came to Moses because of the word of the Lord that came to him. He became a personality of authority. And as far as he has to do with his function in Egypt, he was an authority. Moses was an authority to Pharaoh. Moses was like a deity to Pharaoh. And the reason is because the word of the Lord came to him. So the word of the Lord came to Adam. Be fruitful. Multiply. And have dominion. And the moment that happened, they became small entities of authority upon the face of the earth. That's the first point. He, I have said, ye are God. Small g. Go back to Psalms. Number two, and all of you are children of the most high God. It means that the expression, the manifestation of your authority is dependent upon how submitted you are to the most high. Exactly. So this creature called man, first of all, is a kingdom agent. Secondly, he is designed to represent God. Thirdly, the extent of authority he carries is a function of his submission to the most high God. It means man is high, but he will have to submit to who? The most high. Whenever you see man's challenge, man's challenge according to the doctrine of the kingdom, man's challenge is the challenge of rebellion. When man came to a point where man felt he didn't need that covering, he didn't need to function under the government of God, he was no longer illustrating God. He was no longer on errand for God. He lost his essence for existence. And Satan became his master. Because there's no vacuum in the spirit. It's either you are a slave of God or you are a slave of the devil. Even if you don't know it, the atheist in the UK is not aware that he's Satan's slave. Because the moment you, you, you lose connection with the authority of God, you become a slave to Satan. You are no longer part of the people that God can use to administer his kingdom upon the face of the earth. So this issue of kingdom is a critical issue when it comes to man. Because man is a kingdom agent. I have said, ye are God. And all of you are what? Children of the most high God. That's the first point. Ye are God's because the word of the Lord came to you. Number two, ye are to operate under the authority of the most high. It's the most high that you submit to. Is the most high that you get your essence from. You get your matching orders from. But the physical creation will see you as a God, as a dominion. The expression that God has given men upon the face of the earth is the expression of dominion. But the secret of that dominion is that you are a child of the most high God. Do you know who a child is? Not Pekino, child. Child, child, child. A child doesn't question. A child doesn't know, so he submits for education. A child doesn't contest with, with established authority. It just flows with it. He said, you are children of the most high God. 
Number three, in the judgment. Number one, ye are what? Number two, so don't think that you are God by yourself. No. We are God and children of what? The government of God becomes what makes you a legitimate authority upon the face of the earth. And when you check the life of Jesus, you will see the secret to his ministry. He said, the words I speak, they are not mine. I can do nothing of myself. He goes to the father and the father gives him perspective. The same perspective that the father gives him that he functions in. That's how man was designed to function. What I'm preaching to you today, it came from him. Yes. I found how to receive his instruction. So I stayed there. Hallelujah. If I call on his name, he will appear. He would, he would do something here. Because I came to represent him and I stayed in his presence to receive grace to represent him. Enough to know what he was saying. So I came today to tell you what he said. That's how to operate as a child of the most high God. You are not the one that is in charge. You know the one that calls the shots and you don't by any means violate his authority. As long as you function like that, you are safe. Because man is a creature through which the dominion of God can come into the earth. God decided to make himself handicapped. He decided to make himself spirit. Therefore, making himself handicapped to operate in the three-dimensional world, and because of that, man is needed to extend the dominion of God into the three-dimensional frame of reference. For this reason, God created man in his own image, and what? After his own likeness. So that man will not live according to himself, but man will live according to God. That's the idea. So if you are living outside of the authority of God, you are a rolling stone. You don't know why you are here. That's the fundamental issue. Okay. Are you still with me? Next verse. Next verse quickly. He said, but ye shall die like men. This is part of the judgment. It means that in God's original plan, death, mortality was not part of God's original plan. But mortality became a direct result of man's rebellion. Oh, I know you don't believe that. So let me show you from the book of Genesis the kind of life that God intended for you and me. Go back to Genesis quickly. Are you there in Genesis chapter 3? Genesis chapter 3, verse 22. Quickly. He said, And the Lord God said, Behold, this is after man's fall. Man's fall is Genesis chapter 3, from verse 1 to 5. So this is after man's fall. This was God's statement. He said, What? And the Lord said, Behold, man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. Now, lest it put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. It means the tree of life was man's access to immortality. The original plan that God had in mind was to create a being that was immortal. But immortality was in the tree of life. So the man that fell was not righteous, wasn't born again, he was innocent but he did not have the nature of God. If he had eaten of the tree of life, he would have had the nature of God and he would have had immortality. He would have had life and immortality. So part of the judgment that came to Adam was ye shall die like a mortal. Mortality became one of the consequences of Adam's rebellion. And any time we rebel against God, there are grievous consequences consistent with the errand 
that God has sent us to dispatch upon the face of the earth. Are you with me? You are not with me. Do you still remember the great accreditation that took place when Jesus came to the rivers of Jordan to be baptized and God the Father had to speak and say, this is my beloved. Do you still remember it? You still do? Now, what was that about? Why did the Father have to come and accredit Jesus? It was so dramatic. The Holy Spirit came in bodily shape like a dove and rested upon him. Then the Father spoke. This is my beloved son. Why was that necessary? The reason was because Jesus was going to be the first man ever that was going to operate according to God's blueprint for man. You know, Adam was created to operate in God's image and God's likeness. You know that? Uh, but Adam chose the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which, of a, which is a tree that will make you independent from God. You will not need God again. You, you exist Apart from God, that is man of man, man after his own image, after the image of man. That is what the tree of the knowledge of good and evil made Adam. He made him what? Man after the image of what? Of man. The tree of life would have made man after the image of God, after the life of God. Adam will have been an immortal being. Part of the direct consequences of man's rebellion was that he will die like men. There is always a consequence when men refuse to operate as children of the Most High God under the authority of him that is domiciled in the heavens. There is a fracture on earth. Because that's the purpose for which you were created in the first place. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. So for the first time, God had a manifestation of his blueprint. So he had to come and celebrate it. Because there were only two options of what God could do after the fall of man. The first option was to take one of us to heaven for induction and teach us the way of heaven. Then after the induction is completed, God will now bring the person here and that person will become our teacher. Or God will bring one from heaven here to teach us about heaven. Because that's the base of our true, that's our true authority base. It is that which is in, oh my God, you are not following me. Are you here? So instead of God taking one of us to heaven and recalibrating that one, what God did was that he took one from heaven to come here, to show us God's original book blueprint. Hence, the life of Jesus is a masterpiece of the kingdom style. And in this study, we are going to look at Jesus critically. He is an enigma. He's a creature of heaven that was sent to the earth to show us God's perspective for man, how God intended man to operate initially. Because the mutation that came out of our rebellion had made us a different creature apart from that which God intended. So we needed an example to know God's original plan, and that example is in the person of Jesus. I have in my script here five definitions of what the, the kingdom of God means. When we go to that, then we'll begin a meticulous presentation. Because if there is anything I want you to miss, not the gospel of the kingdom. You can miss other things, but not the gospel of the kingdom. Because your essence is tied to this gospel. This message of the kingdom. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. All right. Definition of terms. Haven't gotten that. Oh, no, 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 no. We have not reached where we define terms. Number five, number five, number five. Um, it must be on record that salvation is merely a remedial initiative. It's merely, it's not the goal. It's far from the goal. It's just a means by which God can achieve restoration for man. But the reason for salvation is kingdom. Man was created as an agent of what? If there's anyone here that 
that by the providence of God becomes, gains access to a political office. That your office becomes an opportunity for God to begin to bring perspective from that level. The reason for which God created you and me will be actualized when we accept the authority of God and we live under the influence of his government. And uh, as we go on in this lecture, maybe in the seventh, eighth lecture, I will tell you the implication of the government of God. The entire book of First Peter, Second Peter, is a compendium that reveals how God governs us from our heart. So we will need to do some book studies and some analysis. Then you will get some statements and then you will see how God intends us to live. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of life that is not an earthly life. It's the expression of the heavenly culture upon the face of the earth. If you live that life, somebody can just look at you and want to be like you. If, if you can successfully live it. Salvation is what? It's a remedial initiative. It's not the goal of God. It's a wonderful thing. There are blessings attached to it, but the reason why you are saved is so that God can begin his original plan with you, which is that you are an agent of what? Of the kingdom of God. So I'm not, I'm not here to live my life, to do my thing. That's rebellion. According the first message of the kingdom that was ever preached is repent for the kingdom of heaven. It's at hand. What's the meaning of that? It means God knows there's only one thing we are good at, rebellion. You need to leave it. Leave the ways of rebellion if you are going to line up with God's kingdom requirement. So I will show you the emphasis of the kingdom, the parables of the kingdom, the life of Jesus as a case study, a graphic case study, a panoramic view of the book of John, and then the administration of Christ in the New Testament and in the epistles. You will understand the administration, you understand the prototype, you understand the example, and then it will no longer be that you don't know how God intends you to live on the earth. Exactly. All right. So, definition of terms. One, I said, we are going to be colliding with these terminologies again and again, so it is good for us to define it. First is the kingdom of God or the rule of God. Kingdom of God. Or the rule of God. What is the kingdom of God? I've defined this before. I said it is God's rule in a general way. From eternity past to the present into eternity future. It includes the paradise of Adam. It, is, it includes the delivery of the law of Moses and the children of Israel under the Old Testament. It includes the time of the patriarchs of God. It includes the current church age. So it is God's rule from eternity past to the present to eternity future because the Bible said that throne, O God, is forever. And the scepter of thy kingdom is the right scepter. It means God was always ruling from beginning and he will be ruling to the end. So the kingdom of God is that general te terminology that captures the rule of God from eternity past into eternity future. It's just, it's just that during the, each dispensation, the texture of that rule changes in each dispensation. The way God ruled in the time of the law is different from the way he's ruling now in the church age. But the bottom line is, he's always ruling. You get that? All right. So that's what the kingdom of God is, the general rule of God. Secondly, we have the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven, or the rule of heaven. It's a concept of the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven, if we had a board here, I would have written 
it in the Greek, and if I had written it in the Greek, you will see that heaven, there is in plural, is actually is the kingdom of the heavens. There's an S. No, I didn't say bring, sit down. I didn't say bring a board. If I wanted a board, I would have told you. I'm just saying that in the Greek rendering of heaven, kingdom of the heaven, that heaven, there's in plural, is heavens. And that phrase appears 33 times in the book of Matthew. Only in the book of Matthew. So when we talk about the kingdom of heaven, we're talking about the reign of God from the dead heavens, from his throne. Are you with me? From where? Now, let me give you an idea. God has a vision. The idea is in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 10. So give me the scripture so that I can tell you God's vision. Matthew 6 10. It said, thy kingdom come that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God has a vision and the vision that God has is that he wants the heaven to rule the earth. That's his vision. That rulership will stem out of the heaven and it will dominate the earth. Hence, we need to talk about the kingdom of heaven. How is the rule of God in heaven? Because that's the same way he expects to see it where? On earth. He wants heaven to rule the earth. So it is only Matthew that captured the fact that even though we are creatures of earth, God, our king, is in the heavens. Huh? And the book of Matthew gives us meticulously 21, 21 principles that is associated with how the heavens governs us. Right? So we are going to do a lot of work on the book of Matthew because the book of Matthew is the book of the kingdom. So we are going to see how the reign of heaven affects you. How what God does in heaven affects you. Even your prayer in the book of Matthew chapter 6, when Jesus was teaching on the subject of prayer, he called God our Father, which art in heaven. It means the destination of your prayer is where? It's not Boko. It's where? He conquers with power but he rules with authority. So the two utensils by which God establishes his control of a certain space is either the tool of power or what? The tool of... Don't forget that. Whenever we are talking kingdom, we cannot talk about it outside of power or authority. So with power, he conquers. With authority, he Two critical factors that you must not forget. There is a lecture we are going to have. It's a full day's lecture where I will show you the difference between power and authority. And I will show you in the life of Jesus how that uh, he manifested both. When I finish that lecture, I will do a practical session. Take advantage of the gifts of the spirit and manifest power and show you this type is called power. I also manifest authority and say this type also is called because you cannot preach the kingdom with lingo. If the kingdom really ex exists, we can demonstrate it. But the Bible said that the kingdom of God is not in world, but it is in what? In power. If it exists and you are a subject of that kingdom, you are a prince of that kingdom, you should be able to use the tools of the kingdom to demonstrate his presence. That was what Jesus did when he said, if I by the finger of God cast out devils, then the kingdom of God is among you. As long as I can cast out devils, I just brought something from the kingdom of God and Satan is displaced. It's a proof that there is such a kingdom that exists in the spirit world. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. How many of you watch our crusade in, in Taraba? You saw the, how the hand of God arrested people with devils. It's a proof that the kingdom of God is legitimate. If we have the ability to extend the finger of God. A bankrupt generation is a generation that cannot prove 
the validity of their God. It's bankrupt. It's bankrupt. I heard a man speaking about God, and he was speaking Queen's English. The presentation was so intellectual. And when he finished, we were on the minister's section. I said, do you know the God you just spoke about? You spoke intelligently. But the kingdom of God is not in this you're speaking. If it is true that you know the person you speak about, after that, your lecture, you will step down and show him and manifest him. Yes. Say, through power and what? If you can display Satan, it's another proof that the kingdom of God is superior. So when you live a powerless life, you are living utopian. A, a utopian is an error expression of life. It's an error, error life. We wanted to get a computer, a, a Japanese calculator that could only take nine digits to calculate something that has to do with 13 digits. The thing crashed. It said error, 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 error. People's lives are expressions of error. Because if you live with that power, it means you have no opportunity to be able to express the validity of the kingdom that God called you to represent. That kind of life is an error on, on, spirit, on the spiritual computer about your evaluation. It's an error. It's an error. Because whether you pray about it or not, whether you deny it or not, the devil is available and is healthy. It's in good shape. <laughs> it will take a law enforcement agent that knows the utensils of power and authority to put him where he belongs. So we can't talk about the kingdom intellectually without stumbling into the utensils that makes it effective. We conquer with power, but he rules with authority. And I will explain what that means subsequently. How he rules within your heart. How we rebel against him in our heart. How we exalt our ambitions and our preferences beyond his will. And the kind of things he does in order to put you back to school. And educate you properly. So that you will know that there are some things that are too high. They are higher than you. You were not consulted before you became an eager man. You, are, you realize it means there are powers beyond your will and knowledge that designed you. If you wake up tomorrow and say, I don't want to be eager, it's too late. Those powers have already put that stamp on you. Today you are an abike. Not because when they gave birth to you, they say, see, we have three names here. You choose one. You just grow up to know that I am abike. There are, there are things beyond you that are at work. And it, is, it will be wise for you to find those things. One of them is called the will of God. You were not consulted before it was set in motion. You can't fight it because it's eternal. You can't destroy it because it, it is covered, backed up with a counsel. There is a wisdom that supports it. And if you fight it, it will become stronger. Oh, it's the will, the will of God. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's higher than you. It's higher than you. They didn't call you and say, okay, we will allocate you. There are three slots. You are, can either be a Yoruba man or Igbo man. Oh, man. Which one do you want? You just woke up, Yoruba. Means that there are powers beyond your imagining. Have you heard the, the statement of the benediction? For thine is the kingdom, for thine is the power, for thine is. Where is your name there? It means there are some things that happen overhead, it's beyond the color of your blood. So in keeping with our definition of terms, there are five points that I need to deliver to you. Haven't studied um, the entire New Testament afresh. Found five things about the kingdom of God. But I will tell you one. You studied four of them. Tell you one. Tell you one. Tell you one. Sometimes before you preach a message, you need to read the whole of Psalms, the whole 150 chapters of Psalms. 
before you preach a message. That's when you will know that the book of Psalms are actually four books that they made one. That's when you know that in all the 150 Psalms, only 15 of them are Psalms of Ascent. That's when you will know that those songs were sung on that various circumstances. And that God will give you songs where you are. If you are in darkness, in a prison, the kind of song he will give you, will, you, you understand? He gives songs in the night. So those songs were actually revelation of how God deals with people in all kinds of situations. It's a compendium, it's a full compendium. Hallelujah. So I had to look up the entire New Testament. And I found five things that I can share with us. Then tomorrow we continue again. We'll go deeper. We'll go to the book of the kingdom, which is the book of Matthew. Then you are going to see how Matthew revealed to us that the throne of God, which is in the heavens, rules in the earth. And the intention of God is that the heaven will rule the earth. And within this intention, he said, I was ministering in Lagos. And the lady began to speak by demons. Began to challenge me. Began to say how she hates me with passion. And I'm terribly, I'm a bad man. Yeah, bad. Satan was speaking through a vessel. I like that kind of moment because he gives the congregation an opportunity to view two kingdoms. The one in me is operating. The one in that one is talking. It's a good moment. It's a very illustrative class. So I now said, let us reveal how Satan is really. So I, I, I climbed up more because she was on the ground. Then I spoke. Then she fell down. Then I now started the lecture. I see. The, one, the one I operate in is more than this one. But this one is real, though. But this one. There's no way you can do that without power. Oh. So we are not men, we are not all about talk. <laughs> Having studied the entire New Testament, I found out that the whole New Testament aspect of the Bible speaks about the kingdom of God. Everything. And I'll prove it to you in a few months, not just today. A few months. We'll go to the epistles, you will see the administration, we'll go to the gospels, we'll see the life of Jesus as a, an example of a kingdom man. Because it is him that came from heaven to show us the way of heaven upon the face of the earth. Right? So every aspect of his life is critical. So we are going to take the life of Jesus as a major case study because that's the prototype of how God intends you to live upon the face of the earth. The way he dealt with devils is how we are supposed to deal with them. The way he related with money, that's how you are supposed to relate with money. The, re the way Jesus related with the authorities of that time, that's how you are supposed to relate with authorities. As a kingdom man that is under the government of God. So in Jesus, we have a wonderful illustration of how our life upon the face of the earth look like in the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 12 the Bible says uh, the scene that we are encompassed with a great multitude of witnesses let us run with patience race that is set before us then he gives us a prescription of how to run the looking unto Jesus so the way we run the race is that we look at Jesus' example. Then you make that example your pattern. Meanwhile, the background of that recommendation is that we have a great cloud of weakness. Have you ever counseled people before and they told you, this is my problem, it has never existed before. It is unique, it's brand new. It was a lie yesterday and it will be a lie tomorrow. Because there are people that have gone through that same situation and they form the great cloud of witness. So the first thing you need to know is you are not the only one who has passed through that situation faithfully. So you may be the one that will, the situation will derail. But 
there are people that have walked through that path and they were faithful and they are in the cloud of witness that means you don't have any excuse so the way to do it is the way they did it look unto jesus and establish his pattern You will see how Jesus was confronted with everything that we complain about now. And how he survived. That's the pattern man. It's a lecture. For all generations. About the manifestation of the kingdom of God. Okay. Matthew chapter 3. Verse 2. Matthew chapter 4 verse 17. John chapter 3 verse 3 and verse 5. Revelation chapter 11 verse 5 Revelation chapter 12 verse 10 Number one The emphasis of the New Testament Is about the kingdom of God And these are my evidences Those four scriptures Matthew chapter 3 Verse 2 Give me verse 1 so that we we'll get the context Before you go to 2 In those days came John the Baptist Preaching in the wilderness of Judea. This is the first kingdom message that was preached in the New Testament. What was it? Repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is the requirement of the kingdom of heaven, of the rule of heaven. As far as the rule of heaven is concerned, we are only good for rebellion. So you will need to repent in order for you to embrace the rule of heaven. The requirement for man is what? Repent. Because anytime you have a position that is contrary to the position of God, if you want to continue with God, you will need to repent from your position and latch on to what? God's position. And you will never outgrow the need to repent as far as the kingdom of God is in view. Anytime you are confronted with God's perspective that is different from your own perspective, the requirement is what? Repent because the kingdom of heaven Let me take you to Revelation chapter 11 verse 15 quickly. Just trying to show you that the whole Bible, the whole New Testament is about the kingdom. And the seventh angel sounded and there, was a, there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. Even the end of the book, the subject is about God's reign. about God's way. So that's my first discovery that the entire New Testament section of the Bible, when we go into it, you will see it so clear. It's about the reign of God. So God wants to reign in your life first. And when he reigns in your life, through your life, he will reign in every place where you find yourself. You are the conduit pipe through which God's dominion can manifest upon the face of the earth. If you are yielded to God, there is no extent to which God can affect this globe, affect the earth, affect the nations of the world. I, I was traveling to Brazil. I fasted for seven days as instructed. And as I was in the airport, my eyes were open. I was seeing people's problem but he didn't send me to them but he was showing me that they have problem they have problem they have problem so I stood on the queue they were attending to me and then the guy attending to me from the airline I said it seems you are a pastor I said how do you know is it written on my face he said, I just designed that you are a pastor pray for me pray for me I touched his hand and I saw his problem I told him this is your challenge this is your problem this is what is happening to you this I, I now saw one that was deeper for, than he can handle. I just left it. I said, there are other aspects, but you have not followed the Lord enough for you to be able. If I tell you this one and you attempt, swallowed. 
So deal with this, deal with this, deal with this. Hallelujah. The kingdom was burning in my heart. You cannot change anything except the Lord rises within you. So you are the conduit pipe through which the Lord can reach men. Finished in one hotel. Went to preach. My father and the Lord invited me. Zaria. So I finished preaching and it was time to go. And then the hotel people now say, we, we perceive that you are a man of God. Eleven of them knelt down. And as I began to prophesy, I touched one. That the power of God took that one. And all the ministers in that conference were lodging in one hotel. So the ministers came back and saw me doing a hotel session. <laughs> now, the reason was because the Lord in me, he rose up. He rose up, he rose up. Those were the days when it doesn't happen every day, so don't come. But if I, if I cite you, you begin to tell me, talk to me about you. The people were humbled by the insight that came. So we had to, the hotel was saved. Hotel. It, it's through your vessel that it will do what? It will manifest. Tomorrow we are going to continue in the morning. It's a long journey. It's a long journey. The gospel of the kingdom. God wants to reign in your life. Oh my. Now, where you are seated, can we, can we sing this song? You reign forever. Your name is ever. Reduce your volume. Okay. Once upon a time, Satan was so mad at what we had done, so he came that night to destroy me. And darkness fell upon me. Hey. That's when it's a test to know whether you know Jesus. Jesus happens to be my friend, so I now called him. I said, Help me, help me, help me. I said it three times. Then I kept quiet. It was, it didn't come from heaven. It, it was from inside me, he rose up. It didn't come from heaven. I was expecting light. No, it was from inside. He rose up from inside. He wants to rule. If you allow him to rule, he will be powerful in your vessel. If you make him king, he will become powerful. But if you despise him, like Peter, you will cry. Can us no doubt that we perish? There will be, there'll be, no, there'll be no response. He came from inside and disarmed Satan. When he did that, my strength began to come back from my bones. There are some things we can't see on the pulpit. Our God is real, is is alive, it's powerful. But we need sons and daughters of this generation to function under his government, under his authority. If you do that, he will come out from within you and challenge the situation. One more time. You reign forever. Your name is ever. You are the wisdom before time began. You reign forever. Your name is ever. lies
that if you don't allow him rule over your life that the darkness in your family will remain what God needs is to conquer the heart of one man and bring that man under his rulership and the man acknowledges his government from that point the recovery starts becomes a tool through which he can recover grounds that have been conceded to the enemy grounds that have made the devil boast you reign forever your name is ever you are the wisdom I see in a vision of God. I see the clouds darkened, so dark. And I ask God, I say, What is this sign? And the Lord says to me that there is one among us. A mighty darkness used to visit you. A mighty darkness used to visit you and when this darkness comes you begin to choke breath begins to leave you when this darkness comes breath begins to leave you and that darkness begins to choke you if you are in this congregation stand on your feet breath begins to leave you the darkness begins to choke those of you that are standing, come, come, come to me. Come here, come here. of you that are online participating if you if there's any of you that has this kind of experience can you write your name down in the dialogue box either on MixLR YouTube Facebook we'll pick it up and we'll minister to you accordingly the reason I had to call you out is because this case is an emergency an emergency that we are trusting that the Lord will deal with. But before I begin to pray, my pastor will interview you so that we we'll know that it is the situation I mentioned that you are responding to. But sometimes we'll make a call here. Some people that have nothing to do with the call will just show up. You are the way it's not before time. You reign forever. Your name is ever You are the wind. 
Cases are various. Listen to me. I have seen further that there is one of you standing here. The spirit is on you as you are standing now. And um, as we begin to pray, you that choking experience will start. But don't be don't be afraid. All right? The choking thing will start, and then we will now cast out the spirit. If I, by the finger of God, cast out devils then it is proof enough that the kingdom of God is among you now those of you in the congregation just stretch your hand in that direction pray for them let this yoke break from their life let the yoke break In the name of Jesus. As I pray, those ones among you whose cases are emergencies, the hand of God will come upon you and will cast out the spirit. Father, those ones among them whose cases are emergencies, I ask, let your hand descend upon those ones let your hand descend upon those ones so that we can help them let your hand descend upon those ones let your hand descend upon those ones let your hand descend upon those ones in the name of Jesus let your hand descend upon those ones let it come stronger let it come stronger let it come stronger let it come stronger now, you see, now let me lecture you a little about this spirit, right? Oh. Now, this thing that is happening, this is, there are many spirits that Satan used to kill people. This is the most common. The hand of God is strong, it's very strong, very strong here. Now we command that yoke break from this woman. Break from this woman. Break from this woman. In the name of Jesus. There is another one of you, the hand of God will come upon you before I pray for the rest. And your case is an emergency and we need to help you this night the finger of god will descend upon you father in the name of jesus that other one in among them i ask that your hand will come stronger 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 yes it's coming stronger it's coming strong let your hand come stronger let your hand come so let your spirits come stronger and identify that one that is standing among them right now in the name of jesus let your hand come stronger stronger 
stronger stronger in the name of Jesus yes it's coming it's coming stronger I sense it now it's coming stronger let it come stronger show me that other one show me that other one Holy Spirit show me show me so that these spirits can be casted out from the life of that individual okay that lady You know darkness, this darkness we are talking about. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. In the name of Jesus. You cannot take this one. So let her go. If I touch you, you can leave. Let these ones go. Let them go. Let them go in the name of Jesus. Let them go. Let her go. Let them go in the name of Jesus. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go in the name of Jesus. Let them go in the name of Jesus. Let them go in the name of Jesus. Okay? Let them go in the name of Jesus. Let them go in the name of Jesus. Let them go in the name of Jesus. Come, woman. Give me your hand if you can. Stand up. you sitting here sit down sit down one of you sitting here you will not believe but God will prove it what I'm saying is your umbilical cord your um umbilical cord it was fetched when you were born you used to do rituals you used to do rituals your umbilical cord was separated from you used to do rituals so father in the name of Jesus oh, God. that's one whose umbilical cord was used to do rituals at the count of seven help me find that one one two three Four, five, six, seven. Help me search for that one. Ushers, help me find the people outside. There's somebody that the hand of God is upon now. And we need to deliver the person now before we close the service. The hand of God is upon you now as I speak and I feel the angel of the Lord touching you I don't know where you are seated but anywhere you are seated is touching you and it's even becoming much stronger much stronger much stronger inside or outside the hand of the Lord is upon you and it will become much stronger so ushers if you find the person outside bring the person I want to conduct a deliverance I want to conduct a deliverance. The hand of God is upon that person. But it's unfortunate we are not in the same hall. Some people are outside. Lord, let your hand be stronger. 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 This is an emergency. If we don't deal with this case by next week, the sickness that will come on the person to be difficult for the person to recover. Oh my God. Samaiko Kaperi Masiko. Presco Felita. Iko Benzo Zomina Capre. 
Ambarato schizo. You see, the spirit of death just ran away from someone. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Spirit of death. It's run away. I saw it now. Can you help me with that person quickly? The spirit of death left someone now. Left someone. So look for that person. Look for that person. The person, the person shouting now. Spirit of death left the person. I'm in a giant of a holy book. Shaman as a girl of my head, no sentiment. And the Lania could break it, the Mazaina could be Lama. I'm in a Surya, Verumo Surya, Kimara Basuria, Presco Vela Miala, Zia Mamma Brokoska, Zamania, Kielaman Roma Santo. The spirit of death must be humiliated, must be cut off. Give me that water, give me that water. Open it for me. Pour it here. Let her go. 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 I succumbre capitale zupre here for Zamina. Now listen, look at me. Just look straight into my eyes. Look straight. Look straight. Don't remove it. Don't remove it. Just look straight. Look straight. How many of you know how the spirit of death looks like? So let her go. 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 You can't stay. You can't stay. Let her go now. Let her go now. Yeah. 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 I break the yoke of the devil. I command the hand of Satan break in the name of Jesus. Meanwhile, Sunday is a miracle night, not today. Sunday. Sunday evening. If you have someone crippled at home, just help them. Blind, help them. Deaf, help them. Cursed, help them. Just anywhere, anywhere, inside, outside. God will be doing, oh my. Oh my. See, this is a case that if we press, if we press this case, somebody will die. If we press it, if we press this case, someone will die. So, the way, those days we normally kill them, but now, can you pray for this lady? Now we will we'll separate her. We will separate her. We will separate her. We will separate her. Can you stretch your hand? Pray, pray for her. Yes, you are released, you are loose, you are released. Go. Everything that is closed in your life will open up from this night, from this night. You are released. Grace is given unto you. Grace is released. Grace is released. Can you pray? Can you pray? There's someone, oh my God, details with hell. But let's pray. Let's pray. If the Lord accepts that we'll release judgment, we'll do that. But let's pray. As I compel in a sicko brantelli. Shama monte ka salaboria Ramesku felami sika broske volonde malatwa Mama itoka pelami Presko fe salisko rabadan tomila Ameno presko fe sekenanteli Rama masiko brela Shima ko preska veslamina Prakatala babo shemine keria Risco mahai toke mosilo presko vesemin. Okay, 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 okay. Now, I've, the demon is on her umbilical cord. So put your look for it. Look for the place and put your finger on it. Put your finger on it. This this hold this hold that you have had on this lady. Now I demand her release in the name of Jesus. I put an end to the witchcraft that was done using her umbilical and you. Oh, that witch that took advantage of that state of weakness to plunge her into a, a, a situation of liability today in the name of Jesus. I rise in my calling and I strike at 
the heart of that wickedness. Let her go in the name of Jesus. As I go, pray in tongues, pray in tongues. Zimomone mosekle presko falama. Man so celebra kaito kuma samina. Andelobaboria selikos kama sanda. Lord, we ask that everything that was buried this night, let it be exhumed. Let it be exhumed. Let it be exhumed. In the name of Jesus. Hey! Maya kose maliko mansale. Shelimo korea. Kambo selimo kora masanta. Mama Maya korea. Yes, today, I decree your liberty. I decree your liberty. Let the hand of him that sought to afflict you be cursed in the name of Jesus. Shikabonde. Maikos kabe saminala. Malama mosi kosendo valia. Prisko filamina sula basketombre. Ambarata baboria. Shamina Kose, Sedam Okoria, you are removed. You are removed. The darkness will no longer have access to your soul. I proclaim your liberty. I proclaim your freedom. Oh, Sama Mama Yakonde, Rabose Kamansela Yeta, Rasketon Bela Kusa Mantalia, Ambra Bakoske Tamina Selimonde. Abre scovi la bosca tambre, chama ma coria, iscompeleso, presco vela mansalia, ale mossa catala, a mai compele, suma capella cose, a gaito compadia, a mesoria, ah, glory to God. So she's free now. Listen, someone in this congregation, somebody died. And when the person died, some people took um, a white cloth and covered the face of the dead person and then made some incantation and took that white cloth. Since that death, those people have not had rest. Torment of devils. The instrument that is being used is that tool of necromancy, that white cloth that was used to cover the dead. There are three instruments that the necromancer has. The stick that they use to measure the height of the dead person before they construct a coffin. It's a, it's a weapon. But this one was not the stick, it was a white cloth. Today, 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 today. Now, let me take, From this moment henceforth, you are set at liberty. So you can now go into what God has ordained for you and no man will resist you. Let grace be poured on you from this day. Listen, there's a war here. There's a war. And I'm seeing that white, that white garment that is being used as a tool for manipulation. Tool for witchcraft. You know what? We're going to command that garment to be burnt. And wait. And when we do so, the captives will be free. Can you cry? 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 Raske so se la mantoria. Yama masuka barata skemina santeni. Uke skabaso se limo teni. Selima Selimo Korea Parata is Campeso Capasca Sole Matelli. I compresco vela minataya. Precoseto compre. Ambarasca socia la cotomba. I mama. Shababaita compresca faluse mali. Ambresco vela. I caseli compre. Samacuria sacatala. Ruke scamin susa sali. Ebrekeda, Kura Masiko Brantelia, Yaka Boseke Samina, Ronte Babahai Tokama. Yeah, 
Rose Sali, Rante Kuma, Emba Caparato, Risco Pela Manzeli, Escope Lama, Iko Seli, Ebrante Kusabacatala. Oh, Lord. Oh, Sambelo Gloria, Seminata. Busca me sulia, escupe sandalia, ama santa bavoria, mami no cobre escavalate, mama 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 sick. We give you praise, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we ask. Is there anyone here implicated by that act of necromancy to give instruction to devils to oppress the members of that family? If there is there anyone implicated, Lord will want to help that one. So we ask that your mighty hand might search this congregation. Search this congregation and find that one that is implicated by this revelation. Inside and outside. Let your spirit help us with the searching. Okay, it's, it has agreed. So Holy Ghost, anywhere that person is inside and outside, on the streets, on the field, stretch forth your hand and find the person. 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 In the name of Jesus. Ushers, help me. Help me. Find the person. Let the hand drop on that person. Let the hand of God come upon that person. Yeah, the hand is becoming stronger. It's becoming stronger. It's becoming, yeah, it's becoming much stronger. Much, much stronger now. Much stronger, much stronger. Holy Ghost! Holy Ghost! Holy Ghost! Help me find the person. Ushers on the streets, I want to ensure that that person is liberated before I leave. Before I leave. Okay, the person is here. Father, help me. Help me. Yes. Yes, so bring that person for me. Ushers. The miracle night is for Sunday, but today there are emergencies we need to deal with. Hi, Bobo, see, come on today. Where are the ushers? Maracos, que so se la yiko Old family is under attack because of that act. It's a work of a necromancer. Whereas human beings celebrate birthdays, necromancers celebrate death days because those death days are the launching pad for satanic infiltration. But today we close the door. We close the door. Can you stretch your hand and pray for this family? Pray for this family right now. Pray for this family. Pray for these families. Saiko Param. Imparato Sketo Brezo Vadima. Kura Mama Siko Bande. Prasketoma. Let the power of the necromancer be subdued. You killed before. You will not kill again. You will not kill again. You will not kill again. Mama Saiko Peri Masunda. Bruska Beconde Ezeli Montelia. Shaminore Boscante Rababonja Hapres Kovalato. We close the door of death in your family. By his compeller, Sikoma. We close the door of death. Break in the name of Jesus. Silence. Hey. Silent. 
Jesus, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Listen, I see a, a black garment. This time it's in the hall, not outside. It fell from heaven. There's a covering cast that is upon someone's life, and the hand of God will fish you out so that we can help you, Father. Anywhere that person is with this covering cast from my right hand side to my left hand side. To the back of this hall i ask oh god show me a sign let help me find that person 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 holy ghost help me find that person the hand of god will fish you out in a moment of time and this okay okay it comes stronger it comes stronger it comes stronger it comes stronger holy ghost help me holy spirit I forbid that this one be a victim. I forbid. Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Ghost, help me. That one that there is a covering cast. You are in this hall. And the hand of God is coming stronger. It's coming stronger. It's coming stronger. Oh my God. There are two other people are outside also. One in the hall, two outside. One in the hall, two outside. Lord, help me find the one here. Help me find the one here. Help me find the one here. Holy Ghost. The two that are outside, help me retrieve them. Help me retrieve them. Help me retrieve them. Help me retrieve them. Holy Ghost. There are two outside. I see them with the eye of the spirit. One person online with the covering cast issue. You feel something like a cobweb that comes over your face. You that is listening to me online. If you can send your name across, we'll pray for you here. Bring her. It's a, it's a spirit of darkness. There is there is there is a priest, a priest of darkness that is in her family. And today, in the name of Jesus, I command that hold of darkness upon your soul. Break! 
that hold of darkness I deny you access come out of her in the name of Jesus see put your hand here put your hand here on the stomach pray in tongues leave her so pray in tongues pray in tongues where are you the demon is on her head just put your hand on her head pray in tongues now pray in tongues let her go there's still one outside there there's still one outside there's still one outside holy spirit in the name of jesus i ask that you arrest that one yeah keep praying you pray we approach the foundation of the altars that have been devoted to you the spirit of darkness that ascends from it we bind it in the name of jesus let her go let her go from your altar 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 that spirit of darkness you are bound 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 psycho paluama there's one person left there's one person left the person is outside yes you come to the house of God to live not to die thank you Lord aha uh -huh. release her yeah yeah you just came out you just came out are you aware oh okay you just came out all right welcome welcome come come do you know where you came from where you came out from did you see it stand up yes you just came out you just came out you just came out she just came out now she just came out she just came out she just came out she just came out just now I decree that no weapon that is formed against you shall be able to prosper. See, I see a creature, a strange. I see there's still one person outside. There's still one person. Lord, in the name of Jesus, help me find this one person. Help me find the one person. Help me find the one person. On the street, help me find the person. On the streets, on the overflow, help me find that one person. She, she ran out. She ran out of where she was. You will see people on the street and you think they are alive. They are not. They are not. Okay. 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 Release her. She's free. Now, um, stand up. Ushers, you have not found that one person. Okay. Um, come, Tony. Let's go and find the person. Found the person. Is this fine? The devil should not should not succeed in binding. Only you are gone. Only you are gone. Oh, 